Arc 6, The Corridor of Memories Chapter 34, Coming out of the convenience store, there was a wondrous world. Natsuki Subaru was born into the lax educational environment of the Heisei era Japan. If we were to tell the whole story of the entire 17 years of his life, it would probably take all 17 years to do it. So, if we omit those parts and just briefly explain his current position, it would be along the lines of a third-year high school hikikomori. Or, in a little more detail, it would be a hopeless shit who goes against his parents' expectations and shuts himself in his own shell at a time when exams are coming up. He had no particular reasons for withdrawing himself. One ordinary weekday, the thought just occurred to him, it'd be a pain to get up today, and from there, his absenteeism was underway. Slipping further and further like this, the amount of time he stayed away from school grew longer, and, before he knew it, he had become a shut-in who made his parents cry. Day after day, he spent in indulgent slothfulness, cutting off all communication, lingering on in this state, until... Subaru, in the end, I got summoned to a parallel world, ha. Huh? Subaru? While he was busy muttering to himself and trying hard to organize some understanding of the current situation, two white hands grabbed onto his cheeks. Looking up, there was a beautiful silver-haired girl in front of his eyes. Honestly, a very beautiful girl. With long silver hair that gleamed like moonlight and violet eyes like embedded gemstones. Her long lashes were trembling as she watched him with a worried gaze that took her beauty beyond the natural order of the world, such that it gave him the illusion that he was seeing some divine art piece magnificent enough to make all the artists of the world give up their pens. And then, there was the question, why would such a beautiful girl be squeezing his face in a close enough range that they could feel each other's breaths? Subaru, nnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnnn
This is way too late for self-introductions, isn't it? Subaru, Wawa. And just like that, yanked out of his high-spirited self-introduction, his thoughts spilled out into that groan. It was only a little later when the seriousness of the situation became apparent. He was rather proud of that self-introduction, but seeing the way it was received, Subaru couldn't help but bend his neck. But, after that, hearing it again from the two girls, it was clear why they were so surprised. Subaru and the girls' memories were different while Subaru was supposed to be meeting them for the first time, they already knew who Subaru was. Of course, there were no such memories on Subaru's side. So then. In other words, Subaru. You don't remember anything? About this tower, about what happened in Priestella. And, even, about Ram and Beatrice. And about me too? Subaru, Yuum. Yeah, that, seems to be, yes. Seeing Subaru with his knees neatly folded and stuttering out his reply, the beautiful girl widened her eyes. The sight of her pupils violently trembling sent a sense of intense guilt into Subaru's heart. But she was not the only one who was shocked by Subaru's reply. Your memories. Are gone? No way, there's no way that could happen. Muttering this in a whisper was the pale-faced little girl. Even more confused than the pretty girl, the younger girl was not spared from the shock. Sitting on the side of the ivy bed, the little girl sitting beside him was softly tugging on his sleeve. Seeing her delicate fingers lightly trembling, Subaru felt a pain inside his heart. Subaru. Facing the two girls, shocked and lost in front of him, Subaru tried to think of something to say, but unfortunately, nothing came to him. Honestly, there was so much cold water dumped on him at once that it would have been enough to drown in. Initially, what Subaru thought had happened was him just getting summoned to a parallel world. While getting summoned to a parallel world, even with the just attached to it, was already far beyond what would be considered common sense, it turned out to be even further away than he had imagined although, one could say, he almost had the right answer. As far as Subaru was concerned, this was not the familiar world he had lived in for 17 years. It was clearly evident just by looking at the outlandish clothing, and the inhuman beauty of these two girls. If that still wasn't enough, the giant black lizard the size of a horse should also be submitted to the court as evidence. He had heard of Komodo dragons that were supposed to be pretty big, but that would be nothing compared to the stature of this black lizard. And with the organic bed and chairs made out of ivy added to that, we have a pretty clear case on our hands. In other words, this was a world outside all common sense. An alternate, parallel world. Belonging in the so-called fantasy genre, a world wholly unknown to Subaru. Then the next question would be, why was Subaru summoned here, and which sorcerer had summoned him? At first, he thought it was the two girls in front of him, since that's just how stories usually pan out, and he figured they were probably the main heroines here, but following that train of thought would be a little strange. As previously mentioned, the girls knew Subaru, yet Subaru had no memory of this. Their understandings were at odds. Subaru, then I've met them already, but I just forgot about it. That's. Trying to process the new information from their latest exchange, Subaru made a difficult face. At the very least, Subaru's capacity was already quite overloaded when it dawned on him that he was summoned to a parallel world. If he were to also understand that he had actually been active in this parallel world for quite some time before this, Subaru's plate was really in no condition to take this on. Frankly, Subaru would have been more inclined to say something like is that even possible? And laugh the matter off. But the girl in the lowly seemed dead serious, and didn't seem to be lying either. Of course, Subaru had no memories of the things these girls were talking about, and he would have stubbornly denied them if he wasn't feeling so guilty about the look on these girls' faces. In fact, if he had to pick between his own opinions or the girls, he'd probably believe the girls since he wasn't even close to trusting himself enough. Of course, that wasn't his only reason. A stronger clue would be the changes to his body. Subaru, yeah, this doesn't seem to be the same body I came out of the convenience store with. Mumbling this, Subaru held up his right arm and opened and closed his fist. It might have been psychological, but his arm felt a little stronger than before. And on his palm, there seemed to be a few more calluses that he didn't realize were there. These weren't calluses that came from swinging bamboo swords because, after all, he hadn't practiced with bamboo swords for over a year now. Also, those weren't the only changes to his arm. Subaru, grotesque? Turning his arm over, Subaru frowned up his face when he saw its backhand side. His arm not only felt slightly stronger, but its appearance had become grotesque as well. From his right elbow, all the way up to his wrist, there was a long pattern of black spots they bulged out like veins and covered over his arm like a tattoo someone with rather bad taste might have gotten. If it didn't seem so organic, it might have been mistaken for a tattoo, but no matter how he picked at it, it was just a part of his arm. Undeniably grotesque. So he scratched at it even harder. When tracing it with his fingers, the texture felt no different from his skin. It didn't hurt on its own, and there wasn't any strange numbness either. 
And, digging his nails into it, the corresponding sharp pain came just as he would expect. If he scratched to his heart's content, he wondered if the black skin would break and bleed. And if it did bleed, would the blood be red? Subaru. Subaru, ha? Huh? No no, nothing? I just thought my arm got sunburnt to well done and was a little bothered by it. That's all. Although he was a bit shocked by the change, when he heard the pretty girl's worried call, he immediately tried glossing it over with a joke. One could say it's fortunate, but Subaru wasn't someone who balked at the sight of wounds on his own body. It's not that he wouldn't feel guilty about damaging the body his parents gave him, but even without this, his sense of guilt towards his parents was already piling on over and over at this point. Still, this was a pretty wide area. If he wore long sleeves and maybe some gloves he could probably keep it from ruining anyone else's mood. Subaru, I usually wear long sleeves anyway, and it's not illegal to equip some fingerless gloves too. If I ever get into a dangerous situation, I can just yank off the glove and show them the black arm. And they'll be like no way, that guy's got black arm. Isn't that just exciting to think about? Subaru licked his lips and swooshed his arm around like crazy. Considering the changes to his arm, as well the strangeness of the whole situation, the believability of the girl's explanations were very high. In the first place, Subaru's most recent memory was immediately after shopping at the convenience store. Subaru was definitely wearing his jersey when he finished shopping, but right now, far from his favorite old jersey, he was wearing some sort of dirty worn-out traveling clothes. Nor was he wearing sneakers on his feet, and his well-done over-sunburnt arm wasn't holding a shopping bag either. Indeed, he had not only jumped worlds, but had leaped through time as well. Coming out of the convenience store, the moment he blinked his eyes, he woke up here that was Subaru's understanding of it. If so, then at which moment did he lose consciousness? By the time he realized he had been sleeping, he was woken up by a call. So then, what was the blank void before this? He was summoned to a parallel world from outside the convenience store, and after some time had passed, he lost his memories. Summoned to a parallel world sounds like the unraveling of a dream he had dreamt who knows how many times before yet he could not simply be pleased to accept this terrible, unexpected gift. Unbeknownst to Subaru, Subaru had lived for a time in this parallel world, and it was a fact that over that time, Subaru had interacted with and gotten know these girls he couldn't recognize. Would it really be alright to believe them, believe in their goodwill, and stay here with them? Plus? Subaru, ah, uh, eh, you, uh, that, that's right. I can understand why you're feeling down, but I'll just say one thing, let's pull ourselves together and get our spirits up. After thinking long and hard about it, Subaru suddenly puffed up with spirit and shouted that out of the blue. Beside him and in front of him, the downcast expressions on the two girls sent his heart into a passionate boil. Without a doubt, they were confused and heartbroken about this situation. While it was still a bit hard for Subaru to accept that he was the primary cause of this, he knew he was the only person who could fix it. So, extending out a hand to each of the astonished girls in a deliberately flashy gesture. Subaru, as far as I know, these cases of acute onset amnesia usually get better due to some sudden plot development so there's no need to be too worried. If it's anything like in movies, it usually gets resolved in one or two hours, and then everything goes back to normal for some cliched happy ending. Tragedy is the best spice to lead up to grand happy endings, after all. Sorry, I kind of have no idea what you're talking about. Subaru, okay. But. Immediately after Subaru laid down his rapid-fire delivery full of bravado, the beautiful girl informed him that she didn't understand any of that. Subaru felt like deflating at those words, but the girl quickly shook her head. And then, lightly scratching the corner of her eye with a sudden smile. Subaru is still Subaru, after all. Mn, I'm relieved. Subaru, eh? I is that right? If you say that, then I guess I feel a little bit relieved as well. E-I-I-I-I-I-I. Subaru, W what did you suddenly do that for? With a spirited cry, the pretty girl slammed her palms onto her own cheeks with a force that cannot be overlooked. Clapping down with both hands at once with a crisp sound ringing out, the girl's cheeks turned bright red. Seeing Subaru thrown into complete disarray at the sight of that gesture, the pretty girl lightly shook her head and... There, I got my spirit back. Being like that is no good, is it? How could we keep making the troubled face when Subaru must be feeling even more troubled than we are? Subaru, it may not look like it, but this girl is crazy ferocious. Quick, Beatrice too. With her cheeks still bright red, the pretty girl's dashing declaration stunned Subaru into a state of shock. And then, with the same fervor, she called to the now petrified little girl sitting beside Subaru. In front of the pretty girl's intimidating presence, the little girl in a dress shriveled back a bit, but... I'm shocked too, and I also understand the sadness. But right now, we have to think about the one who's taking this the hardest. We have to do something for him, don't we? B Betty is. 
The little girl closed her mouth as if searching for what to say. Seeing her childlike indecision, the pretty girl didn't say a thing and only watched and waited for her response. She could have continued on and pressured her to change her heart. But the girl didn't do this. And the reason was most likely because she had faith in the little girl. Unable to remember them, Subaru couldn't possibly understand the trust that existed between these two. Subaru. Must be very distraught right now, I suppose. Subaru, well I didn't really say that. Making an ultra-small effort to salvage some dignity, Subaru quibbled. But seeing that the lowly wasn't convinced by this, Subaru ended up scratching his head and... Subaru, ah, uh, honestly, yeah. Yes, I want you to please help me. After being pushed into a corner, he admitted to the true state of his mind. Seeing this, the little girl's eyes widened. In her thin, pale blue eyes were a pair of the strangest pupils that is, for some reason, Subaru seemed to be seeing the wings of butterflies. Aowog, just, really. Subaru is just the most hopeless contractor in the world. The next moment, as if those butterfly wings had fluttered up a tornado, the lowly's attitude took a 180-degree turn. Crossing her short arms, the little girl shouted this out in an exacerbated voice. Seeing her like this, the pretty girl smiled, and Subaru's shoulders jumped up. And then, pointing a finger directly at Subaru's nose. All the time, you're just throwing up all sorts of trouble to annoy Betty, I suppose. If you don't stop it with these, these sloppy, irresponsible shenanigans, even Betty is not going to love you anymore. Subaru, ooh ooh ooh, th, then, t that means? But since you're sincerely begging for Betty's help, I'll let this one go, I suppose. At any rate, without Betty, Subaru will just be a hopeless lonely wimp who can't go on living. Subaru, did you have to put it like that? The incredible rate at which the lowly escalated the conversation knocked Subaru straight into shell shock. Without this girl, would he really get so lonely that he couldn't go on living anymore? How exaggerated could it get? Humph, even if you tell me you've forgotten, I'll make you remember, I suppose. Betty's contractor is just a mopey, fussy guy who, no matter what happens, is never going to take on any sort of sepia colors in my reminiscences or anything like that. Subaru, there was a lot in there I didn't understand, but was all that supposed to be talking about me. Setting contractor, or whatever words he felt like he couldn't ignore, aside, the downcast expression on the little girl's face seemed to have lifted. And so he decided to resist the urge to object for now. Frankly, it was still quite difficult for Subaru to just calmly accept the current situation. The mess in his head still hadn't been sorted out, he still hadn't completely come to terms with reality, and he couldn't exactly swallow all the explanations as fact. But even so, for now, the girl's feelings had been conveyed to him. Subaru, my name is Natsuki Subaru. I just got here and don't even know the left from right yet, but I assume we're probably friends. And I realize this is a bit brazen, but I'd like to ask you two a favor. Jumping up once more, Subaru jabbed a finger toward the ceiling and announced his name. And then, shooting his arms toward the two girls in front of him, he tilted his head and... Subaru, would you mind telling me your names please? Hearing those words, for some reason, the pretty girl's throat froze up, and the little girl blinked her eyes. But this only lasted for a moment. Then, setting that aside at once, smiles gradually emerged on their faces. Emilia, my name is Emilia, just Emilia. Nice to meet you, Subaru. Beatrice, Betty is the great spirit Beatrice, and Subaru is Betty's contractor, you know. And, just like this, they told him their names. So, after all that, Subaru managed to complete his self-introduction to Emilia and Beatrice for the second time. But. Everyone. Over the breakfast table, after explaining why everyone had to reintroduce themselves again, the general mood was like sitting on a mat full of needles. Naturally, Emilia and Beatrice were present. And aside from those two and himself, there were five other ladies and gentlemen in attendance the ratio between gentlemen and ladies was a bit skewed, but at least both genders were represented. Emilia explained that they had all followed Subaru to this tower, which, from the inside, he didn't even realize was a tower, and that they were his companions currently putting their heads together to capture this tower. If we were to describe each of these fabulous members in turn, it would be a glamorous busty young lady in a sexy outfit, a pretty little girl with a bewitching aura unbefitting of her age, a cute-faced girl with peach-colored hair and an enchanting gaze, an elegant girl with youthful features and a gentle air about her, and, lastly, a handsome young man with upright features surrounded by an air of nobility. Everyone is physically attractive, was Subaru's miserable realization about this parallel world at this point. Subaru, well, just from personal preference. I still think the beautiful silver-haired Emilia-chan takes first place. Everyone. He whispered that random unnutritious thought out loud and met an extremely cold reception in return. Well obviously. After all, they'd just been told that Subaru lost his memories and had forgotten every single one of them. 
It was inevitable they'd be as stumped as Amelia and Beatrice were. Amelia, so, I guess everyone is pretty shocked. Subaru is in quite a situation right now. But, even in a situation like this. No, precisely because the situation is like this, we should give him our support. Saying this, Amelia pitched in to help Subaru sum up his situation. Nonetheless, even in the short time that he's gotten to know her, he could already tell that she wasn't very good at public speaking. It was only when Beatrice spoke her piece that they able to take control of the conversation that was rolling all over the place. Thanks to that, Subaru's condition was just barely communicated to everyone present when. Peach-colored-haired girl, Emilia-sama, may I? Raising her hand, the girl with peach-colored hair asked Emilia for permission to speak. Emilia, who was addressed with the respectful Sama, nodded uh-huh as a matter of course. Emilia, that girl is Ram. She's a maid from the mansion. Maid, do you know what that is? Subaru, and eh, no problem. But, a mansion maid, you say? Amen, I think I got it. The pretty peach-color-haired girl named Ram according to Amelia's supplementary information, was apparently a maid. Judging from the fact that she had a maid with her, Subaru could more or less imagine what Amelia's identity might be, while Ram, who couldn't care less about that train of thought right now, shot a pale red, piercing glare at Subaru. Ram, is this some kind of prank, Barosu? Subaru, I know I can't help but come off as suspicious here, but that's the truth. Also, what's with turning my name into a blinding curse, oi? And, the sleeping girl back there, are you her older sister? Ram. Being called by that blockhead name, Subaru frowned up his face and objected. Hearing this, Ram narrowed her eyes. His question was about the girl in the green-colored room he had woken up in who was not among those present here. With bright, light blue hair, and facial features identical to Ram she was sleeping, and no matter what kind of commotion was being thrown up around her, she went on sleeping as though it had anything to do with her. After introducing himself for the second time, she was the first person Subaru asked Emilia and Beatrice about. According to them, finding a way to wake her from her unwaking slumber was one of the primary reasons they came to capture this tower. Subaru, sorry I caused all this trouble when you're trying to wake up your sister. But I honestly have no idea what's going on with a lot of things right now. So please insult me all you want once I get my memories back. Ram, the way you said that, you really don't remember? That frivolous attitude and tone doesn't seem any different from regular Barusu. Subaru, when you put it like that, it almost sounds like I still got all my good qualities from before. That's good news, right? Well, like they say, a man's nature doesn't change so easily, so please treat the new me the same way you treated me before. Subaru puffed himself up with spirit, and Ram only stared at this irresponsible attitude in disbelief. Like nothing changed at all. Subaru was so much like his usual self that she couldn't help but have such doubts. Apart from the memory loss, it was true that it didn't seem all that bad. At least, in terms of interactions, there was no need to worry about anything feeling off. Subaru, so that's Basie. You. Busty girl, teacher Sama. Just as he was about to take a breath after Ram's questioning, Subaru almost flipped upside down when he felt a sweet breath blowing into his ear. Completing his emergency sideways trajectory, he looked back and saw the glamorous black haired girl standing in a position close enough to lick his left ear. Wearing a black bikini, hot pants, and a cloak, the girl seemed to be aiming for a rather specific fetishism. But what freaked Subaru out wasn't her clothing, but her movement. Only a moment ago, she was sitting cross legged across from him on the floor. How did she manage to get up and sneak beside him? Subaru, uh, the uh. Shala, it's Shala. Teacher Sama's favorite disciple, and the star's keeper of this Pleiades watchtower. Subaru, star's keeper. Also, by Teacher Sama, you mean me. Shala, Yesu. Beaming a smile that could outshine the sun at Subaru, who was pointing a finger at himself, the beautiful girl Shala nodded. The sight of that carefree smile completely turned Subaru's impression on its head. In terms of outer appearance, she seemed to be the girl closest to marriageable age in the group, and, combined with that fashion choice, he originally thought there was an especially mature attractiveness about her. But her attitude was like a ten-year-old. Or rather, like a puppy that's overjoyed to be noticed by its master or something like that. In fact, not too far from Subaru's impression, Shala was wagging her black ponytail behind her like a dog wagging its tail. Shala, say, Teacher Sama, you're still not tired of playing around like Tisu? Just how many times do you have to forget me before you cut that out? Subaru, it's not like it's a matter of having had enough or not. Actually, are you telling me my memories get blown away very often? Did crossing dimensions make my memories easy to blow away or something? Hearing Shala's airheaded comment, Subaru looked around at the others to make sure. Although Subaru had been barely able to accept the reality of his memory loss, having it happen frequently was a whole other story. That's not just acute anymore, that'd be a chronic condition. 
If he's constantly losing his memories because of some endemic parallel world disease, that's quite a bit more serious than just making daily life inconvenient. Subaru, what is it? Do I really lose my memories that often? Beatrice, no, of course not. Calm down, I suppose. Shala, don't make Subaru more confused than he already is. He's just finally settled down too. Holding Subaru's left hand, Beatrice, who was sitting beside him all along, sighed. She shot Shala a piercing stare, and in return, Shala stuck out her tongue with Lei. Shala, I wasn't trying to trouble Teacher-sama, you know. Ah, but then, if that makes Teacher-sama's head filled with Shala, then that's okay too, isn't it? Oh I'm such a fiendish girl. Teacher-sama, do you like fiendish girl Su? Subaru, at this point in time, fiendish just means confusing, so no thank you. Right now I only want help from angel slash goddess slash fairy types, so I'll leave half-naked older sister types for another time. Shala, chi I, that's so mean. Even though my boobs are so big, teacher Sama's so mean. In front of Shala's ever-escalating affection towards him, Subaru declined her offer with an awkward smile. Honestly, he didn't dislike her at all, but he could tell that her affection was not directed at the Subaru of this moment, but at the teacher Sama Subaru of her devotions. In fact, Amelia and Beatrice's fondness of him must have been the same as well. Little girl with indigo blue hair, really, Oniai-san is such a headache-san. Regardless of Subaru's inner thoughts, the little girl commented in her sweet voice. She was a little girl who appeared to be about the same age as Beatrice, but unlike Beatrice's fairy-like features, her face was still within the realm of human cuteness. Her indigo blue hair was tied in a French braid, and a rather unbecoming seductive gaze was being sent out from her eyes. Subaru, I should like to have a word with your parents, baby. Little girl with indigo blue hair, it'd be better if you don't. Oniai-san and mommy won't get along, you know. Also, aren't we talking about Oniai-san's memories right now? Subaru, even if you say that, there's no way to get them back right away. For now, let's just start with your name. Tell me that, and we'll have taken the first step in our friendship, you know. Indigo blue-haired little girl, pho. Oh. Friendship. Not sure what was funny, but the little girl covered her mouth and quietly snickered. It was like a snicker somewhere in between mocking and speechlessness, and yet, it was neither of the two. Subaru couldn't understand why she was laughing like that, but... Meili, I'm Meili, Oniai-san. If you haven't forgotten your sewing skills along with your memories, I still hope you could make me stuffed animals again. Subaru, oh, my hidden power has already been revealed? Sounds like I'm pretty fond of Meili, huh? Are you also my little sister protege like Beatrice? Beatrice, that girl was an assassin sent to murder Subaru and Betty in our house, I suppose. Subaru, what kind of joke is that? Beatrice dumped a rather heavyweight joke on him, but for some reason, no one else was denying it. Unless. Subaru looked at Meili, and she gave him a little smile and waved her hand. Subaru had no idea what actually happened, but this little girl being an assassin still sounded a bit unrealistic. Although, maybe it wouldn't hurt to stay on the safe side. Subaru, so then, Ram and Shala and Meili have all introduced themselves. Then the next would be. Setting his various questions about Meili aside for now, Subaru turned his sights on the remaining two people to the light purple-haired girl in a scarf and the handsome-featured youth. Of all those present, only these two hadn't uttered a single word since they explained Subaru's situation. And, to Subaru, with the gender ratio excessively tilted towards females, that youth was the only person of the same gender as him. So he was quite looking forward to what he had to say, but... Handsome youth. The silent youth's yellow pupils were trembling, and a ghastly aura was emanating from him as he sat there. It was an atmosphere that made one hesitate to speak to him, and Subaru couldn't say a word. Even for Subaru, who was universally recognized for his inability to read the mood, seeing the youth like this made him reluctant to set foot into his world. Perhaps, out of all the people in this room, he was the one whom this had hit the hardest. Light purple-haired girl, just. Handsome youth, G.H. Light purple-haired girl, just, give him a little time. That's fine, right? In that youth's stead, the pretty girl in a scarf lightly raised her hand and said this. Her clothing seemed to be quite a bit warmer than the others, and, contrary to her cute appearance, her tone was a tad tomboyish somewhat reminiscent of what they call a bokukeo back home. And just like this, she sliced through the congealing atmosphere. Either way, her words salvaged the conversation. Although, for some reason, Amelia and everyone else seemed terribly confused about something just now. Subaru, ah, yeah, of course. It's my bad for suddenly shocking everyone with this. Light purple-haired girl, the way I see it, it's not only that. Subaru, oh, it is a boku ko? So this girl who gave off the impression of a boku ko, actually did refer to herself with boku. With a thoughtful expression, the girl played with her scarf and wryly smiled at Subaru's words. 
Anastasia, for now, you may call me Anastasia. In fact, if it weren't for your shocking revelation, it would have been me in your place, making a shocking revelation of my own. But it seems, there's been a mix-up. Subaru, a shocking, revelation. Unsure what kind of revelation she was planning to make, Subaru seemed perplexed by her words, but Anastasia only lightly smiled and did not answer him. All the while, watching their exchange, the expressions on Amelia and Beatrice's faces also seemed as though they were puzzled by something. They didn't know what Anastasia was going to confess either, but there appeared to be something else that was bothering them. Ram, in any case, it seems Knight Julius needs some time to settle down. So let's prepare breakfast in the meantime. Emilia-sama, can I borrow Barusa to fetch some water with me? Subaru? Standing up from her seat, Ram patted her knees as she said this. Instead of indulging in the stagnancy of the situation, she suggested making use of the time. It made sense, yet something about it felt off as Amelia's face seemed surprised by this unexpected request. No matter what, to ask an amnesiac Subaru to accompany her would just be. Amelia, Subaru's memories are muddled up, maybe it's better to let him rest. Ram, even if we let him rest, there is no way for him to recover his memories right away. Barusu said this himself. Besides, whether or not he has his memories, Barusu is still a servant under Roswell Sama's employment. He's just a bit more forgetful than usual, to use that as an excuse for slacking off is unforgivable. Subaru, that's pretty harsh, Ramchan. Ramsan? Ram. Ram shot him a glare, and Subaru's shoulders shriveled up into a ball. Even so, perhaps Ram was right. Although Subaru was currently in a difficult situation, he wouldn't feel comfortable being overly pampered because of it. Besides, Subaru. Watching the downcast youth supported by Anastasia, Subaru felt that he shouldn't be there, at least until the youth had settled down. Or maybe it was because she noticed this, that she wanted to bring Subaru out of the room. Subaru, if that's the case, I shouldn't underestimate you, Ram. Ram, anyways, let's go, Barusu. I don't expect other capabilities from you, but at least you should have no problem drawing water. Emilia, oh, then we could. Ram, you shouldn't spoil Barusu, if you want what's best for him. Perhaps calling her name without any suffixes was the correct answer, since Ram didn't object that time. Instead, she stopped Amelia, who wanted to come along. Just as Amelia was about to argue, Subaru cut in, it's fine it's fine. Subaru, Ram's got a point. Aside from what's in my brain, my body is fine. I heard that I'm supposed to be a servant? Like a scullery boy? Seems like it I guess, so in that case I should go draw some water and resume my duties. Amelia, Subaru you're not a servant, you're my. Subaru, I'm your, what? Hmm. Unless a, I, I'm, your LLL, LL. L lover or? Amelia, no no, it's absolutely totally not that at all. Subaru, it's absolutely totally not that at all. Well, yeah I guess. Breathing heavily through his nostrils, asking this full of hope, he was immediately shot down by Amelia. She was definitely his type all the way, but this highborn flower was too far out of his reach. Memories or not, how could Subaru possibly hope to come within reach of such a cute girl like her? Subaru, anyways, don't mind me, go take care of your end. Hopefully by the time I come back, he'll feel a little better. Amelia, MN, you're right. I understand. I'll try to talk to him somehow. Putting jokes aside, Subaru lowered his voice and whispered this to Amelia, while pointing in the direction of the young man. The youth seemed to be exchanging words with Anastasia, but for some reason, he didn't appear to be feeling any better. It would be great if Amelia and Beatrice could slightly lift his spirits. Either way, he wasn't expecting Shala or Meili to be of much help in the matter. Subaru, of course, the most dependable one here is Betty. I'll leave it to you, contract KO. Beatrice, I'd prefer if you don't call me that. Subaru, hmm? Ah, oh, really? Then, just Beatrice? Beatrice, that's good enough for now. Subaru can leave it to Betty. Still holding his hand, Beatrice slightly objected to what Subaru called her. Seeing her reaction, Subaru got the feeling that he made the wrong choice in the end, but still didn't know how to fix it. Then, Beatrice let go of Subaru's hand and turned her eyes toward Ram. Beatrice, older twin sister, I'll entrust Subaru to you, I suppose. Ram, understood. But we're not going far, I doubt it will be dangerous. Beatrice, it was precisely in that kind of undangerous place that Subaru dropped all his memories, you know. Ram, good point. Subaru, ugh, no counter-argument at all. Listening to the exchange between Beatrice and Ram, Subaru was stuck with this unpleasant consensus. Just then, Emilia brought back a water bucket from the edge of the room. Handing the bucket to Subaru. Emilia, just go slowly with Ram and take your time. 
I'll try my best to calm him down before you get back. Subaru, ah, uh, all right, do your best. I'll leave it to you, Emilia-chan. Emilia, aha. Uh -huh. For just a moment, there was a pause before she replied, but Subaru didn't pursue it. Ram, Barusu. Ram called for him to hurry up, and Subaru took the bucket in one hand and followed her out of the room. As he left, he stole a glance in the direction of the youth, but he still didn't appear to be in a state to talk. Subaru, so uh, would it be alright if I asked what the problem was? Ram, you mean Knight Julius? That is quite cruel of you, Barusu. Subaru, it's cruel. There was now only the two of them. Walking down the hallway side by side with Ram, Subaru asked about the youth who seemed to have been more shocked than anyone else in the room. Her reply was that he was cruel, and he had picked up that the youth's name was Julius, a name that gave off quite a smart impression, he thought. Subaru, I guess we can leave him to Amelia and Beatrice, that's why you brought me out here, isn't it? It wasn't just to fetch water, right? Having put a little distance between the room and themselves, Subaru got straight to the point. Ram. Subaru, not talking, huh? I mean, I'm not saying that for sure, I could be wrong, and it could turn out to be really super embarrassing for me maybe. Ram. Subaru, unless, it was really just to get water? Um, uh, if that's the case please forget what I said, uh, now that I think about it, all that smug-faced something must be up, was just totally cringy right now. Ram. Subaru, ah? Uh? Thinking he probably got it wrong, Subaru's face was starting to tense up from the lack of a response. But, just as he was trying to find some way to smooth it over, Ram stopped in her tracks. Going ahead for two extra steps before realizing that she had stopped, Subaru stopped as well and turned around towards Ram. She lightly brushed her peach-colored hair, and... Ram, that's enough, dumbass, you can drop the act now Barusu. Then, with a slight tinge of anger in her light red pupils, she spoke. Subaru? The act. Ram, that's the whole point of changing locations, you understand that don't you? You didn't have to make a girl so embarrassed. Disgusting. Subaru, disgusting. Not understanding what she was trying to say, Subaru furrowed his brows. But in the meantime, Ram hugged her own elbows, and shook her head at his stupid-looking expression. Ram, anyways, Barusa must have come up with some kind of half-assed plan again, didn't you? Never mind the indiscreet Emilia-sama, the opposing faction Anastasia-sama, and the untrustworthy Shala. At least tell Ram what you're thinking. That way, they can better coordinate in case something goes wrong. With that as the subtext, Ram plainly said this to Subaru. Receiving this, Subaru's eyes drifted for a bit, before bringing up his right arm and scratching hard at his hair. Subaru, about that, um. Ram, what you said just now. It's not that I don't understand, but. Ram, but. Subaru, sorry, but, this is really not an act or a prank or anything. I really don't remember. Sorry, I can't live up to your expectations. Ram, stubborn. I know Barusu always likes to go at it alone, but this time it concerns me as well. Ram has a stake in what happens to R.E.M. So I'm afraid you have to let me in on this. Subaru, no, but I mean. Who's being stubborn here? Subaru felt himself at a loss with Ram insisting like this. No doubt she couldn't accept the fact that he had lost his memories, but seeing her so obstinate, Subaru didn't know what to do. In the end, how would pretending to lose his memories help capture this tower anyway? Ram, even though Ram doesn't understand. If it's Barusu, Barusu always has a plan. So, come clean with me. I will keep it secret. Subaru, although sharing a secret just between the two of us sounds enticing and all. She didn't know the details, but she was certain Subaru had a plan. The way Ram said this made him so surprised that he stood there stunned for a moment. But even if she questioned him with this flimsy logic, Subaru wouldn't know what to tell her. Come to think of it, she said if it's Subaru. Just how much faith did she have in him? But, while Subaru was busy being occupied with these thoughts, Ram. Ram, Barusu. Subaru, hmm? Egoi. Suddenly taking a step forward, Ram closed in and swung her arm, and the bucket flew from Subaru's left hand. Metal struck upon the stone floor, and its high-pitched noise rang down the hallway. Shocked, Subaru was about to raise his voice to ask her why she did that. But. Subaru, you owe. A hand clenched onto his collar, and by the time he noticed he had lost his balance, he was pinned against the wall. Letting out a small cry at the pain of his back striking against the wall, Subaru realized it was because of the small statured girl in front of him. He realized it, but he didn't know why. Subaru, what, what are you doing? Ram, tell me. If you don't cut this out, Ram also has some other ideas. Subaru, T. What the hell's with you? Didn't I tell you I got nothing? I'm not lying to you. 
Faced with her quiet threat and use of violence, even Subaru's patience had reached its limit. How many times did he have to say it before she believed him? Just like this, he tried to grab of Ram's wrist that was clenching onto his collar when. Ram, that's enough. Spit it out. Subaru. Hearing this up close bark, Subaru's anger scattered away through his ears. Perhaps it was the shock, but it was not only that. There was shock. But after the shock of this sudden scream, he felt her strength falling away. But aside from this, there was still something else stopping him from moving. Ram, spit it, out. Her voice was trembling. Hearing this, even without his memories, Subaru nonetheless felt its impact. The impact was not only because she had betrayed his impression of her, but because of another, indeterminate reason as well. Ram, please, spit it, out. Subaru, RM? Ram, please. Softly, leaning her forehead against his chest, the girl spilled this out in a trembling voice. Having lost all of the force of a moment ago, the only thing that remained was sorrow. She wasn't crying. Because she wasn't so fragile. She wasn't grieving. Because she wasn't so kind to herself. Only, held within that voice, was a sorrow that had no place to go. To whom, or where, or what was it pointed? Ram, if even Barosu has forgotten, then Ram is, then Rem. Subaru. Ram, then Rem, she. Rem, was the name of her little sister. Sleeping in a bed in the green room, a sleeping princess who looked exactly like her. That girl, and her older sister in front of him, just what must have happened between Subaru and them. It was not something Subaru could imagine at this moment. All Subaru knew was that Ram was truly relying on whatever he had forgotten. Subaru, I'm sorry. Dropping down his arms, watching her as she pressed her forehead against his chest so he could not see her expression, Subaru quietly apologized. Was it an apology for what he had forgotten, or an apology because he couldn't answer her? It was probably both, and some other emotions mixed in as well. Other than that, Ram didn't say anything more. Subaru didn't say anything either. Only, feeling Ram grabbing tightly onto his shirt, he closed his eyes. Only the bucket that had rolled onto the floor was staring at the two, helplessly leaning against each other. Chapter 35, Thin Ice Relations Subaru knows how painful it is to be forgotten. So, forgetting someone, he would never joke about something like that. On their way back to the room, Subaru inadvertently held his breath when heard the voice from inside. Even though he couldn't see who was speaking, he knew from the voice, beautiful like a silver chime, that it was Amelia. Listening to her say his name in her slightly tense voice, Subaru couldn't help but strain his cheeks into an awkward smile. Carried within that voice was a powerful trust and an equally powerful plea. It was from Amelia to Natsuki Subaru and certainly not to this Subaru. He acutely understood this. Ram, would never joke about something like that. Yes. Never thought I'd say this, but Amelia-sama is right. Also hearing that voice, Ram, who accompanied Subaru, whispered this self-derisive comment under her breath. Unlike Subaru, who was carrying the water-filled bucket, she was empty-handed and holding her elbows, her nails digging into her white skin. Almost like a reminder to herself, a regret, and an extension of the pain of an unfulfillable vow. Subaru, Ram. Ram, it was just a pointless joke, forget you ever heard it. It'll only worry Emilia-sama if you bring it up. So for the sake of Ram's impeccable reputation, keep it to yourself. If you dare mention it T. Subaru. Ram, it seems you really don't remember. If he dares mention it, something scary will happen. That was probably what she was trying to say. Or perhaps, she was expecting Subaru to counter with a quip before she did so. Just like before, when the connection between her and her younger sister was brought up, he thought he saw a glimpse of disappointment flashing across her pale red eyes. But that sadness disappeared in an instant. The fact that she wouldn't let him tell anyone, was it because Ram was too strong for that, or because she was too weak? He didn't know what lay in the depths of her heart. Only, faintly, on the center of Subaru's chest, there was still a lingering trace of where her head had rested. Ram, sorry to keep you waiting. We've returned. Without giving him any time to think, Ram resumed her steps and headed into the room. That stubborn attitude might just be Ram expressing her insistence on the matter. Seeing this, Subaru had no choice but to respect her feelings and not mention the matter. Subaru entered a few steps behind her, a more or less strained atmosphere spread throughout the room. But even so, it was still somewhat better than immediately after Subaru made his shocking revelation. As proof of that, after Amelia greeted the returning Subaru with thanks for the hard work, the next voice that followed was. Julius, earlier, I showed you an unsightly side of me. Is it all right if we start over? Subaru, oh well. I should be the one T. I mean, I'm the one who surprised you W. 
Ah oh no, I shouldn't have interrupted you. Please go on. Julius, there is no need to be so restrained. If you're so formal with me, I wouldn't feel at ease. Saying this, a faint smile emerged on the purple-haired youth Julius's face. Earlier, he was the one who had turned pale at Subaru's revelation. Subaru didn't know what Amelia and Beatrice might have said to him while he was gone fetching water, but he seemed to have recovered enough strength to speak. Only, there were still the words Ram said to him in the corridor. When he asked her about Julius, she told him that he was too cruel. Just what could she have meant by that? Julius, let us start again, I am Julius Eukilius. This is Anastasia-sama. I serve as her knight. And you? Are like a friend of sorts. Subaru, I see, nice to meet you. But, why did that last part not feel very confident there? Julius, unfortunately, we might have had a slightly different understanding of our relationship. I myself think of you as a friend, but as for what you think of me, it's... Subaru, literally, lost to memory, ha. Huh? Julius, that is, quite true. Picking up a certain elegance in his words and conduct, Subaru bent his lips. According to Amelia, he was the only other male member of their company on this journey into these treacherous environments so, naturally, there must have been considerable trust between them. But then again, considering Julius' knightly air, and their exchange just now, even without memories, Subaru could imagine his previous self having made a terrible first impression. Amelia, it's alright, there's no need to worry. Subaru and Julius are really good friends. We were there, so we can all attest to that. Meili, that's right. There's no reason to be so worried about this, is there? Nightoni Isan's already got plenty of other problems to worry about. Watching their exchange, Amelia cut herself in with her hands on her hips, and Meili mockingly concurred with a mischievous look in her eyes. Whereas Amelia's words were purely out of concern for Subaru and Julia's first meeting, Meili seemed to be insinuating something entirely different altogether. Subaru furrowed his brows when he heard this, while Julius nodded as if having understood her meaning. Julius, why, yes. What Meili said is true. Subaru, although we do need to discuss what happened to you, it is not the only problem we are presently faced with. In this regard, please allow me to explain. Ram, this, would it be related to Anastasia-sama's strange behavior this morning? Julius, your observation is correct, Miss Ram. Ram said this, leaning against a wall, and Julius slightly cast down his eyes in reply. Seeing this, Ram narrowed her eyes towards Anastasia and let out a small sigh. Ram, Barusu, give me the water bucket. I will begin preparing the meal. Subaru, aren't we about to discuss something important? Ram, I will be still in the same room. So I can still hear everything. Working will help take my mind off of things. Brusquely saying this, Ram snatched the water bucket from Subaru's hand and headed towards the luggage-filled corner of the room. Then, they saw her slender back setting about exactly that task. Amelia, sorry. Ram, she isn't usually like this. Anastasia, of course, there is no need to mind. It is understandable that she would feel this way. Seeing the desired information one couldn't wait to pull out of the other person's throat suddenly fly so far away, anyone would feel this way. Anastasia calmly shook her head to Amelia's apology. And, hearing Anastasia's reply, both Amelia and Beatrice made a difficult expression. Subaru didn't know what might have crossed their minds, but the answer to that soon came from Anastasia's own mouth. Anastasia, now then, even though after all the confusion this morning, I would honestly do not wish to burden you with any more surprises. I do think that keeping it hidden would only sow the seeds for discord down the road. Therefore, if your accepting soils would permit it, allow me to confide something in you. Beatrice, such an arrogant and roundabout thing to say. Hurry up and get to the point, I suppose. Anastasia, there is no need to be so frightened, Beatrice. One could say we are as close as sisters, you and I. In fact, it is just as you guessed. Beatrice. Beatrice's cheeks froze at Anastasia's words. Standing beside Subaru, as if naturally seeking something to rely on, the young girl's fingers lightly grasped onto Subaru's sleeve. Subaru cast her a side glance, and after some hesitation took her hand. The tips of her fingers were faintly quivering from the shock, but soon, the small palm accepted this warmth in turn. Anastasia, your relationship with your contractor is indeed amicable and ideal. I wish I could have had the same perfect relationship with Anna, but unfortunately, it is not going so well. Amelia, you are addressing Anastasia-san like you're talking about someone else. So that means, you're... Anastasia, ah, yes, you guessed correctly. Right now, the consciousness inhabiting this body is not Anna's. Anastasia Hashin is sleeping deep inside this body. And the one addressing you now would be something of a deceased ghost that has temporarily taken over this fleshly form. Amelia's breath choked up, and Beatrice held tighter onto Subaru. 
Julia's face ringed with pain at her confession, and Meili still looked bored as ever. Only Shala, sitting cross-legged beside Meili, was completely aloof to the conversation, with her attention solely focused on Ram who was preparing the meal. With her back turned, no one could make out Ram's expression as she continued about her work. Lastly, for Subaru. Subaru, what are you guys talking about? I didn't get any of that. Left all the way behind, naturally, he could only make a difficult expression. The body of the girl named Anastasia Hashin was now dominated by another existence, while her own existence was soundly sleeping. Simply put, that was what Anastasia or, the spirit by the name of Echidona, had explained. It seemed that fact was quite shocking to Amelia and Beatrice, while for Subaru, rather than shock, it only served to exacerbate his confusion. Subaru barely had any impressions of Anastasia in the first place. Imagine someone came up and told him right when they first met that I used to be Anastasia, but now I'm actually this other person. Subaru, I is that so? That's uh. That's, pretty big news, huh? He couldn't exactly react except like it was someone else's affairs. No doubt, it was only from the reactions of those around him that he figured that this was a pretty serious situation. After all, they came to this tower for a reason. It was in order to find a way to save the girl that kept on sleeping, and to help those people struck with some unknown disease, that they came here. Or at least, that's what he had been told. Ram, we barely just got here and the key people are already falling apart. Barusa dropped his memories somewhere, and Anastasia-sama's consciousness is deep in the abyss. Subaru, ugh, doesn't look good at all, huh? Listening to Ram's blunt remark, Subaru dejectedly held his head. The problems were just piling up Subaru hadn't even sorted out his own mess, and more difficulties just kept coming. They were going nowhere. In that case. Amelia, everyone, I think even if we hang our heads like this, we won't solve anything. I understand the frustration, I do. But, we can't let our spirits down. Amelia, a lot of people's hopes are riding on us coming to this tower. What happened to Subaru and Anastasia-san, that is a big deal. But. Amelia clapped her hands together and gathered everyone's attention to herself. Then, after pausing a beat, she scanned her amethyst eyes over everyone present. Amelia, we can't stop here. We must give up, that's what I've always been taught. Amelia said this firmly as she looked at each member's face in turn. Her gaze finally fell on Subaru, who held his breath as he was pierced by their amethyst charm. Naturally, his chest heated up. He didn't know what to say, but he could see the expectation in her eyes. Receiving it, and feeling like he must do something, Subaru tightened his fist. Beatrice, ow. That hurts. Oi Subaru. Subaru, ah, my BA, no, not bad. Because this is proof of my determination. Beatrice, even if you say that with a straight face it still hurt when it hurt, I suppose. Reflect on your actions now. Subaru, eh sorry. Hurting you was my bad. But my determination was not. Yeah, that's right. Subaru apologized to Beatrice's protests that her delicate wrist was being squished, but he quickly shook his head. He could see that the situation is worrying. But simply worrying about unsolvable problems wouldn't move anything forward at all. Subaru knew this from personal experience, in fact. If Subaru was alone, he would certainly have lost his way. But, he wasn't alone. Even if he had forgotten everything on his end, there was still Amelia and the others. And so. Subaru, it's true, my memory slipping away all of a sudden has caused you a lot of trouble, I'm sorry about that. But that doesn't mean it's hopeless. Think of it another way. Who knows, maybe now I'm freed from the unnecessary fetters and ready to burst out with new ideas like a fresh spring or something. Then that means we're ready to break out of this mess, doesn't it? Anastasia, that's quite a progressive take on it. Subaru, would you rather go backwards instead? All the important things are ahead of us. They say the goddess of fortune only shows her bangs, you know? Besides, when it comes to capturing this tower, maybe we'll need to come up with a more flexible idea. One that isn't confined by the conventions of this world, like, an idea from another world. Anastasia or rather, Echidona, Riley smiled at that momentous remark, but she was pushed back by an even more momentous retort. Even though he was just bluffing, what he said was right, and there was a need to break out of the current atmosphere. Listening to Subaru's thoughts, the difficult expressions on everyone's faces began to change. Emilia, MMN, that's right. Subaru has always gotten over all sorts of trouble like this. So, this time, you'll definitely get us through it too. Subaru will? That's the spirit. Though that kinda sounds like I'll have to do all the work here, but since you're counting on me, I'll do my best. Such a cute girl is asking for my help, after all. Emilia, thank you, Subaru. Hm, I'm glad. Subaru is still Subaru, after all. Subaru. 
Hearing Amelia's whisper as she put a hand to her ample chest in relief, Subaru was almost caught off guard. Subaru is still Subaru, after all. Hearing her sigh of relief from the bottom of her heart, Subaru felt relieved as well. I guess that's enough, he thought. Little by little, this self would be able to fill the hole left by the Natsuki Subaru she knew. If he could do just that, then he should be able to smooth over all the jumbled relationships here. Julius, well well, that sure is optimistic. Subaru, huh? Just when Subaru was relieved by Emilia's words, Julius suddenly cut in. Sensing Subaru's gaze, he shrugged and loosened his lips with nothing. Julius, I just thought, memories or not, it still is impossible as ever to tell whether you're brave or reckless. On the other hand, perhaps you would only think this because you've forgotten the enormity of the obstacle we are facing. Subaru, oi, why's there always something annoying about the stuff you say? Unless. No way, is that just your true nature? Julius san. I mean, just Julius. Julius, I see. It's just as Amelia sama said, memories or not really doesn't matter. One's nature is not so easy changed. Subaru, I guess I can kind of imagine what kind of relationship we have now. We must be more comfortable with each other than anything else, huh? They were not harsh words of malice, but an exchange of friendly jabs. Nevertheless, Subaru was convinced that there was a certain sense of distance between them. His initial impression wasn't wrong. Subaru and Julius mustn't have liked each other very much when they first met. But afterwards, through various things they've experienced together, their relationship must have improved to the point where they could travel to this tower together. Subaru, then I'll be counting on you, Julius. Until I get my memories back, I'll trouble you for a little longer. Julius, yeah, it can't be helped. Then I will rainly accept this as my duty. Memories are just a trivial matter. I see. That's right. Julius quietly nodded to Subaru's friendly address, and the topic ended there. His memories were lost, and the problems just kept coming. This definitely wasn't something one would meet with a bright face, that was a fact, but to face it nonetheless was a testament to his strength. Julius, when the person in question isn't all that concerned, perhaps that is a grace as well. Subaru, I just don't show it. There's actually a whole storm churning in my chest right now. But, I'll take the opportunity to get healed by some alone time with Emilia-chan later. Emilia, hum? You want a lap pillow? Subaru, um, no. I'm sorry. Isn't that a, a bit rushed? After saying it with his chest pumped up and his spirits high, Subaru suddenly shrunk. Not expecting Amelia to be so willing to give him such tender healing, his heart started cowering in fear. Moreover, it's a lap pillow. Naturally, his gaze fell onto her soft white thighs. Ram, it's ready. Come help carry it, Barusa pervert. Subaru, OW. Feeling something kick in back of his knees, Subaru let out a wail on the spot and collapsed to the floor. All the while, Ram looked down on him with a look of disdain, as if chastising him for his indecency. Ram, your useless positivity is one of your only virtues, Barusu. Use that positivity to set up the food. As well as for cleaning, tidying, and various other chores. Subaru, you just want to slack off, don't you? Shala, ooh. Teacher Sama, I'll help as well, Su. F-O-O-D. F-O-O-D. Just as Subaru was protesting Ram's forceful transfer of responsibilities, he was immediately cut off by Shala's pressing desire for sustenance. Seeing Shala beginning to carry out the plates, Subaru had no choice but to join in the preparations. Subaru, let's see the menu. That kinda just looks like preserved rations. Ram, in fact, it is precisely preserved rations. The few fresh foods Emilia-sama brought over have already ran out. So the diet will be quite bland in the foreseeable future. Subaru, well, hopefully we can capture this tower quickly and get back to somewhere more populated. He had heard it said that people's hearts are only at ease once there are ample food and clothing. In that sense, he wasn't sure just how long they could last in this tower. Particularly in regards to food, in the absence of his memory, Subaru's only impression of the taste of this parallel world was the taste of preserved rations. Which was rather miserable. Ekidona, sorry to bring this up while you're eating, but there is something I want to confirm with you, Subaru Cohen. Subaru, hungry, starving. What me? Something you wanted to ask me? Role-playing as someone who has been treated like a slave and given nothing but miserable scraps ever since he was summoned to this parallel world, Subaru protested against the injustice. But he stopped eating when he heard Ekidona's words. Ekidona, it's nothing, but while I apologize for bringing this up this when everyone is united against our situation, I would like Subaru Cohen to share a bit more with us about what happened to him. After all, your memories were the only ones that has been affected by this tower. Conversely, who knows if the same thing might happen to any of our memories as well. Subaru, right, makes sense. 
Even though having the person involved do it might be a bit difficult, amnesia can be pretty inconvenient, you know. Beatrice, the way you said it make me wonder if you really see yourself as being involved, I suppose. Seeing Subaru nod in agreement, Beatrice could only manage a baffled expression. But, Ekidona's concerns were reasonable. And the truth is, Subaru also needed to know how he lost his memories. The clues to restoring his memories must be tied to how he lost them in the first place. At the table, to Subaru's right was Beatrice, and to his left was Amelia. Those two were at his side when he woke he wanted to know just what kind of memories could have prompted them to sit there of their own accord, and to place in him such baseless trust and warmth. Or rather, it was that he needed to remember, because it was his duty. Subaru, but still. I woke up without remembering anything, so I don't really know what happened. Emilia-chan and everyone, where exactly did you guys find me? Emilia, well, you were nowhere to be seen in the dragon carriage this morning, and we couldn't find you either in any of the rooms on the fourth floor, so we got pretty worried. Subaru's curiosity was piqued by the word dragon carriage, but he did not open his mouth in fear of interrupting Emilia's story. Perhaps, the lizard who stood in the green room was related to earth dragons in some way. They did look like the type you'd see from a horse-drawn cart. He'd have to put off his curiosity in wanting to see the real thing though. Beatrice, Betty was not at her wit's end as much as Amelia was, in fact. I was just bothered that I couldn't figure out where you, my contractor, was within this strange tower, I suppose. That's why I went with her to search around the tower for you, and after that. Subaru, and after that? Amelia, we found you collapsed in the white library on the third floor, and then brought you to the green room. Subaru breathed out a ah after hearing Amelia and Beatrice's joint explanation. Julius, the third floor is one of the floors within this tower. We're on the fourth floor right now. We're going through them trying to reach the first floor, which is the topmost floor. It was thanks to none other than, your knowledge that we already made it through past the third floor. Subaru, thanks for explaining. Did you say thanks to my knowledge? Julius filled in for the missing details. Even so, for Subaru, the contents seemed to be quite lacking in credibility. Nevertheless, Emilia continued where he'd left off with an yeah. Emilia, that's really how it happened. All we heard was gibberish, but you were able to solve it all by yourself Subaru, you were real lolly amazing. Subaru, ha ha ha, thank you. Hey, no one says gibberish these days anymore. Emilia. Subaru, did I say something weird? Though Subaru had tried to awkwardly compliment Emilia, she remained silent as if something was up with her. For a split second, he could see the traces of some strong emotion flicker across her eyes, yet he had no idea what it meant. At any rate, he couldn't keep up with them, as if they were ripples rippling through a pond. Subaru, by the way, you said that I collapsed, and that you brought me to that grassy room. Beatrice, that room is protected by a special spirit. That spirit has the power to heal people's wounds. That is why we've laid Rem down there too, in fact. Subaru, okay, okay, gotcha. So, that's why you also brought me there. By the way, what are the chances that I lost my memories due to that room? Amelia, well, um... Subaru batted one of his eyes shut as Amelia faltered in response, looking like she hadn't thought about that. Though this was only a hunch of his, regarding the intentions of the spirit or whatever, while those may be unknown, if it took the form of a plant, then he couldn't discount it having some kind of cruel nature. Flowers are pretty and filled with sweet nectar to get insects to carry their pollen. But they can also be like carnivorous plants who camouflage themselves to snare in insects to slurp the life out of them. It could have slurped his memories out of him instead of healing him. There was a chance of that. Echidna, it's quite a wild idea, but I heavily doubt that. In that case, something weird would have happened to me first far quicker, considering I've been in that room far longer than you have. Subaru, that something strange hasn't got anything to do with the original body's owner not waking up. Echidna, regarding Anna, that happened before we came to the tower. Her condition has nothing to do with the green room. And also, that's right, the earth dragon who was in the room hasn't forgotten about you, right? Subaru, huh? Echidna, that earth dragon is awfully attached to you. Suppose, for argument's sake, that the spirit in the room had a bad habit of slurping out people's memories, don't you think she would have probably given you the cold shoulder? Subaru recalled the earth dragon that had nestled up to him just after he'd woke up. For sure that earth dragon had been extremely friendly towards him. If the reason behind that was because she'd originally been his earth dragon, then that made complete sense. Though, what she'd said also surprised him. Subaru, that earth dragon is a she. Echidna, let's get back on topic. The chances of that room working such wickedness on you are not high at all. As far as I am concerned, it's the room you collapsed in that's far more of a problem. Y'all said he came to in the Teijita library on the third floor, right? Emilia, yeah, that's right. Subaru collapsed on the white floor in that room. 
Emilia gripped her wrist tightly as she reflected back on that moment. Emilia, I carried you to that room all in a rush, and then tried to go call everyone, but... Beatrice, Subaru woke up during that time and found himself in this condition in fact. Therefore, it would be difficult to imagine that the green room did this, even time-wise, I suppose. It happened in that library, as I thought. If something had happened, then this library or whatever was the source behind it. It seemed like they'd reached a common point of view, but Subaru didn't really get it. Perhaps because it was hard for him to imagine what kind of room this room they called a library really was. Subaru, Erm, um, Teijida? What kind of room is this Teijida library? The name sounds somewhat familiar. Julius, that library is a room containing the the books of the dead. Subaru, the books of the dead, hey, that also sounds like some Chuyuni shtick. Putting aside his interest for the name Teijida, Subaru sunk his teeth into how he'd used the term books of the dead. Dot. Seeing his reaction, Julius gave a curt nod and then continued to speak, saying, we have no concrete confirmation. Julius, but in this library, there are a myriad of books bearing the names of people who are now deceased from all around the world. To read the books, you have to be qualified to do so. It's most likely the kind of thing where you can only read the books about the deceased you had some connection with. Subaru, again with the bad taste. What is written in those books? Julius, the life of the respective deceased, more or less. Intense thoughts swoop through your mind, as if they're being scorched in. It's really not a matter you want to put yourself through over and over deliberately. There was a weight to Julius' words in his explanation, which could only have been expressed by one who had personally experienced this sensation. It seemed to Subaru that Frank the memories of the dead were not something he wanted to have scorched into his mind. To say it frankly, experiencing this sort of shock was not something he was keen to do. Then, if he had collapsed in a library where such experiences were possible. Subaru, was I reading one of those books too when I collapsed? No way, so could something like that have damaged my mind? Echidna, I can't completely rule out the possibility. About that, Sage, what do you think? Shala, are you perhaps talking to me? While nodding at Subaru's guess, Echidna turned to face Shala with a meaningful look in her eyes. As well as that meaningful look, Sage was a really disproportionate way of referring to her. Were he to speak without restraint, Shala looked like the furthest thing from a sage in this room. Shala, no matter how many times you say that my answer's not changing. I don't know anything about the tower, except it's Ryuyul's. I was just told to be strict with rule breakers. No matter what master does in the tower, I ain't got nothing to do with it. Subaru, I don't know why Shala's calling me something like master in the first place, but... Ram, don't worry. Your answer to that Barsa was the same as before you lost your memories. You're just using this without saying anything because it's convenient for you. So gross. Subaru, you can't just jump to such a convenient conclusion. Faced with Shala's gaze, Subaru couldn't help but express his bewilderment, which with no word of exaggeration showed a level of affection that was maxed out. Sure, it might be nice to get close with such a glamorous beauty when he thought about it ordinarily, but not knowing where her favor was coming from only created more confusion in him. Besides, her affection and favor made him feel strangely uneasy. It was something fundamentally different to the sincere feelings Emilia and Beatrice showed him. Though he didn't know currently whether this was a harmful effect of his memories being gone. Subaru, in any case, that library you mentioned feels suspicious. If you're saying there might be clues in there that will get my memories back, then I reckon it's worthwhile going there to check. Julius, yes, we should. Our situation is one that even in the best of times we've had one problem after the other. The problems that plague us have seldom been few. Besides, with the circumstances becoming like this, you must honestly realize. Subaru, realize what? Julius, just how much you've been making up for us. With his eyes still closed, Subaru let out a small snort at Julius' words. His laugh hadn't been out of awkwardness, but a strained one that came from deep within how he felt. They were really overestimating him. The Armageddon must be coming for them to be relying so much on Natsuki Subaru. Bad things came in threes, once again Subaru had been made aware of how much of a hindrance he was, a trait he'd averted his eyes to, it was as if he were saying, you've become a considerable burden. Subaru, anyways, I'd like to go to the library after we finish eating, and if the memories that I lost are scattered about there, then I'd like to go pick them up and stuff them back in my mind. Amelia, geez, that's an odd way of putting it. It's really just like you. Subaru, I'm guessing the way you're saying it's just like me isn't really a compliment, right? Amelia gave the flustered Subaru a small smile as she said that. The atmosphere around the place relaxed just a tad as he received it. They'd come up with a plan and it felt like they were, in true sense, moving forward a bit. Echidna, I am sorry to interrupt you when the mood's like this, but there's just one more thing I want to ask you Natsuki Koen. Subaru, well, you can go on ahead now that you've said this much. What is it? 
Echidna, well, this is just a curiosity of mine which isn't at all related to your memories or capturing the tower, but despite that. Echidna began to stroke her wavy hair, and with an adorable look on her face, compounded by a look of deep intelligence in her turquoise eyes, she asked. Echidna, what does that term you speak quite often of, parallel world, mean? End of chapters 34 and 35, convenience store, there was a wondrous world.